Good morning, and welcome back to another uh, installment in the 80 and 8. Today I'm in the 12th arrondissement, wandering around in the eastern portion of Paris and hanging out in a quarter known as 15-20. 15 is an archaic way of counting, much like 80. It means 300. Terrible. It's a terrible way to say 300. Anyways, it's named after the hospital. There's a hospital in Kansvant, which uh, was named Kansvant because it had 300 beds and it gives its name to the neighborhood. And there are just a lot of hospital tie ins, I feel like, in this series. But today we're going to be wandering around a little bit and uh, checking out our borders, finding lunch first thing. And one of the things that's here that you may be familiar with is the opera in Bastille, where yesterday our boundaries did not include Bastille, today they do, just south of where we were yesterday, actually, and today with Lucy. Hi. Yeah, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, like your mask. Thanks. I've actually never gone up these steps. I sat on them yeah? when I was all on my own, when I first got here. Yeah? And I was like, I'm gonna go out to a bar by myself. And, and then I just wound up scared. sitting on the steps. Yeah. <laughs> Aw, <laughs> the saddest story I've heard all day. Just wanted to see if we could see through to these buildings over here. Um, No, I don't think I've ever been inside. Have you, have you been inside? No. So this opera house was built to replace the train station that used to run from Bastille out to Vincennes. There used to be a train station here, and then they replaced it with this monstrosity, which doesn't look very nice, but apparently the acoustics are amazing. Yeah. That's what they say. So this section of Bastille, like it kind of cuts it right in the middle, is in the 12th and in the quarter that we're in today. Yeah. And so is Bastille de l'Arsenal. So to the west we have Canal Saint-Martin, which makes it really easy. And this section is called the Basin of the Arsenal. And then to the south, we have the Seine, which makes that very easy as well. And the north, Belbourg Saint Antoine, which was my boundary from yesterday, it was my southern boundary from yesterday. But the east is the confusing one, Rouvillot, which we then you have to jump over Gare de Lyon, which we may not go to Rouvillot because I don't know that I want to actually have to go around the train tracks. And then yeah. Rue de Rambouillet, if I'm saying that right, and Rue de Chaligny are the eastern boundaries. So that's where we can't go out. Okay. My other rule has been not eating lunch anywhere that I've already eaten before. Yeah. So aside from that, if we find something that looks good. Okay. Yeah, so this is the boundary from here. So this side is the 11th, this side's the 12th. Yesterday, this is our boundary still, so we can go down that way, but we can also go down that road. Yeah. Which sounds kind of like more fun, because I walked down this road yesterday, so let's walk down that one. Okay. Da -da -da. I've never walked down this side of the opera before. I wonder what this is. Nothing. So this is like the back side. The other thing is on the other side, what we do need to go see, have you ever been to the Coulee Verte? No. The raised train line that's a park now? Oh, I've heard of it, but I've never Okay. I think what we'll do is we're gonna find lunch first because it is definitely lunchtime. Yeah. And then my plan for today is basically the two things that I want to see in this neighborhood are Gare de Lyon and the Coulee Vert. I think those are the most interesting things that I know of to see. And then whatever we spot along the way, we can always go explore. Yeah, nice. Perfect. Pizza Julia. Probably not. Uh, everything, <laughs> everything's closed on the street anyways, including Pizza Julia. Literally everything's closed. We picked the, we picked the worst yeah. street for open things. And it's a Monday. And it's a Monday. Here we go. Here's a, what's in this passage. Oh, is this is the one. I think this is the one that cuts all the way up to this, the other. This is our boundary street ends up up there. We're having no luck with food down here. So let's go back to our boundary street because I think that that's, yeah. there's more going on there. Look at all this street art. Is that? No. That is not a real one, no. I don't think I've ever walked the full length of this passage before. So there's like different color shops, workshops, a restaurant, paint, uh, like studio, tons of street art. But most of it looks pretty closed. All right, well, we'll just see what we find. Do you have any particular cravings? Neither do I. So we'll just kind of see what we end up with. Oh, this is cool. Look at that. Hey, it's the innovation passage. It's where all the magic happens. You don't have to be too shy to walk at least this far into places like this, but we're not going to sneak past any security doors. Is that an actual brand, Longfield? Do you know? Do you recognize it? No. No? It's got your flag all over it. <laughs> it looks pretty comfy. I don't know. Everything's like tight leather. 
in Union Jack eyes. This looks like an outrageously small hotel. I'm pretty sure you rent by the hour. I don't know that for sure, but hold on. That, that, that does feel sketchy. And you're not allowed to visit. It says no visiting allowed. Hmm. I don't know. That looks promising down there, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, we should walk down the street. That that church down there, yeah. I've only ever really seen it from the Coulee Verts above. If we don't find food before we get there, I want to go in that church for sure, because I've never been inside it. I think it's a church at least. There's a steeple. Could be a house. <laughs> it does look like a church. <laughs> it could be a house. And then um, not really finding any, not spotting any inspiring options for food here, but... Um, we could just go for like a kebab or something, if nothing else. Wait, do you have dietary restrictions? No. Alright, we'll see what we find. I haven't done any like kebab-y, fast food-y things yet, so I could definitely be yeah. convinced. The other thing that's cool is these buildings that have the facade that kind of runs out. See that one? How it like comes to a point? And so it, it just like, there's just a sliver of a building yeah. hanging over that other building. You've never had banh mi. It's a Vietnamese sandwich of deliciousness. Okay, I think we have to come back and have banh mi. Actually, we should clean this table. Here, get in line. I'll be right back. I gotta get this shot over here. She's never had banh mi. I haven't had banh mi in a long time. Oh man, I'm excited. It's cool because those are still functional rooms at the end of there. Like you can see people at least use them for storage. It's super, I love that. Let's see how this works. Try not to take the whole thing of coriander in one go. Not my, not my favorite, but after the first bite, at least I would eat here again. How's your very first bite of banh mi? Good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You like it? Mm -hmm. I missed your initial reaction, so. No, it's good. Yours is really hot, like it's steaming. I feel like I only got beef in the first bite. No, that's, well, that's not a bad first bite, I guess. No. Here's some people. Yeah? Coriander tastes like soap. Yeah. It's so good. It's unfortunate because it's so delicious. Yeah. Cilantro for the Americans. Yeah, it's good. Different take. Banh mi is really good. If you've never had it before, it's a Vietnamese sandwich made in a baguette. So it's like meat of like either chicken or beef or tofu with carrots, coriander, mayonnaise. Very good. Okay, so I want to check out this church that I've never been in before. Yeah. And then I'll take you up on the Coulee Bec, which you've never been to. So the parish of Saint Antoine of Cancun. I love, I love the like the mixed stonework and architecture of this church, like with the rounded turret. I'm not a big fan of the brick normally, but in this like weird combination, I like it. It's cool how it's just sandwiched between other buildings as well. Yeah, they built it right up next to it. Yeah, yeah. gotta use every square meter. interior to that church, like the lighting and everything. I uh, I don't know that I'm a fan of that one. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that I'm not a fan of a church. I don't... Uh, I think more interesting. Yeah, yeah. Nah, sorry, to, sorry that you got the least, <laughs> least interesting church that I've had in this series so far. But I will say that like, of all the neighborhoods that I've done so far, the name is printed on more things here than it, it's been in any other neighborhood I've been in so far, any quarter. Okay. Yeah, this one's got Counts Mount printed on everything. I preferred the outside to the inside. Yeah, the exterior looks really yeah. nice. But it is, I guess, the outside is also a mixture of like modern, it's like, it's, so I guess it kind of just, it told us what we were, what to expect. Yeah. And we just weren't listening. From here though, coming out the back, we should be able to find a stairwell up to go see the Coulee Vert. Do you want to go check that out? Yeah. So, the Coulee Vert is uh, this area right here. So you see how this is all like this? Used to be a train line. So remember when I said that there was, the opera was built where the old train station was? This is 
This is the train line that used to run to Vincennes and beyond. Now it's been turned into all of these like ateliers, these workshops, some stores, a couple of restaurants, and on top is a park. And so we just gotta find some stairs to go up, which maybe we should go down there. I think that might be our solution. But this park is what inspired the High Line in New York. The High Line? Oh. So the High Line is the park in New York City that uh, does basically the same thing. Yeah. And is, uh, is bigger than this, for, I'm pretty sure. But um, this one uh, was the inspiration for that. And it goes, it still goes all the way up to, you can run on it as long as you respect people that are walking on it. Yeah. It's a great spot to go for a run. And when you're up on it, it really feels like you're, you know, a little bit of nature in the middle of the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it does take you to some nice parts. All right, here's one stairwell. You, you'll find these as you go, so you won't get stuck up on top, unless you stay after they close. If you stay after they close, then, you know, all bets are off. And there's our least favorite church, but it looks so cool from outside. That's not bad. I think, I feel like, I feel like these buildings, it is nice. It's just because it's in Paris that I like often have a bad reaction to them. Yeah. But then you're like, oh, but if this were anywhere else. Yeah, is it just different? It'd be fun. It's, it's not bad, it's just different. <laughs> the 12th, kind of like the 11th, does have that mixture of like modern and Osmanian and everything else. And I think it's just kind of like a hodgepodge. You get what you get and it's kind of all about the framing in the end. Like these buildings on the other side are exactly what you think of when you think of Paris. Yeah. And then you look over here and it's like, that one right there is hideous. Like, ahead, look at the, the like, brown stone red yeah. brick combo. It's like, why? A tiny window. Why did you do that? That brick is expensive. Why did you pay for that? And tiny windows, yeah. I've done a couple of videos on the Coulee Vert over time. Like, it's definitely popped up in a number of different videos I've done. And we do need to figure out where the boundary is because we're, I think we're approaching it here before we leave Quinze Vingt. But as the leaves are changing here, it's just such a nice place to go get a little nature walk and feel a little bit separated from the madness of the city, even as you have these delightful buildings right next to you the whole time. Look at, what is this? I, I don't like them. You like them? That's good. Stand up for them. Defend them. Why do you like them? They're just interesting. Yeah. And I don't know. I feel like if this were in Berlin, I'd be happy. Yeah, maybe it's because it's Paris. That's my problem. It's, I'm a snob. I'm a, I'm a problem child. So that's what we've determined. I'm the problem. The buildings are fine. <laughs> I'm the problem. Even with these tiny little like no, pigeon windows. Know, yeah, the wind. Yeah. Like, it's hot bit there. yeah. All right. Well, we found Lucy's favorites. Of course, I, you can always work out down here. I feel like I just talked about this in a video. Showed this place. Lots of outdoor workout spaces in Paris. I'm finding more and more throughout this exploration. Okay, so in the spirit of exploring, we could walk all the way down to the boundary this way, which would be nice. But I think you've seen enough. You get the idea. Yeah. We need to explore some streets around here. So I think. I've never taken this elevator before. Let's take the elevator. Oh god, you can take the stairs if you want. Are you scared of elevators? Um, no. It's just like the feeling in your stomach. When it you depends you, on what it. When you're like, Ooh. like if it just drops out underneath you. Yeah. It's a time for trying new things, and apparently trying this elevator is a new thing. Oh, I was hoping there'd be glass so we could see through the other side. Oh, it smells great in here, doesn't it? <laughs> Welcome to Paris. Everything smells like urine. Oh, is that? What's that? That's that, 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 that immediate drop? Yeah. Um, okay, from here. Okay, so we've, we've seen this path. Let's, let's go up to this street up here and then take a right. What are we gonna find here? Kind of nothing. <laughs> Really quick side note, I think this is the pet store that I bought Kate's goldfish. Oh. I bought her a goldfish for her birthday and I got everything from there. I d actually, I bought everything, to be fair, I bought everything but the goldfish because I figured she should probably get that on her own, but I got everything else. Okay, so this is that roundabout that I was telling you about, which is 
Place du Colonel Bourg Bourgoin. Is that it? This is in, right in the middle of our boundary, I'm pretty sure. The only reason I remember this roundabout is it's near the Leroy Merlin, which is out of bounds, but it's like a Home Depot for the French version of Home Depot, I guess is how you can put it. You know what a Home Depot is? Yeah, because they have Home Depot here. That's an office depot. Home Depot is like for building supplies and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, we're right at the, we're right at our border here, right in the corner there. I kind of want to go to Zephyr Paris because my sister's dog's name is Zephyr and it looks like it's right in bounds. So we should go check that out. But I, I got stuck in the rain here once. That's why I remember this roundabout. Uh, Carrying stuff from Leroy Merlin. We'll block back and check out Gare de Lyon. It's a, it is a, it's a pretty train station. The clock tower is lovely. And it has Le Train Bleu inside, which we can go look at a little bit, but I don't think we can really go inside. I was invited to a dinner there once that I did film and I'll make sure to link to that so that you can check out Le Train Bleu in greater detail than we have time for today but uh yeah so this is good to know actually for me personally our boundary is where the uh the brick portion of the coulée verte ends and crosses over into kind of like this more modern hidden park that's good to know now i know exactly where the quarter ends oh i forgot we were gonna go check out zephyr should we go check out zephyr all right yeah it's like a gift shop my sister's my favorite dog of my sister's is named zephyr Jeffo. Oh, i love Jeffo. i don't know if you have a dog voice but I can't. Is very high pitch. I cannot help myself. I just sound like an idiot. Oh my god, you're so cute! I don't want to play with you. What does that mean? Oh wow! Oh wow! This is this is too much. Holographic foot. What the heck? You can get a holographic. It's 3D. Like it. What? Did they trap these people's souls to make this? Like, there's. Speaking of dogs, there's a doggy. What? Okay. I actually don't know that I want to go in here anymore. I'm kind of scared. Okay, well, I'll follow you. You're so brave. Okay, yeah. Like, um, Paul, Danielle. Oh, we should get that. <laughs> we should make that. But I still, it still makes me really uncomfortable. <laughs> Please never give me one of these. What is, ah. Uh... I really don't like it. Zephyr, I'm really sorry they named this after you. <laughs> okay. that, that looks kind of cool. That one, the double helix. My assessment of that is uh, I like it when it's not humans. <laughs> kind of, but not really. That made me really uncomfortable. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I, why did they have to name that after Zephyr? I'm sorry, Zephyr. If you're curious and you're looking on a map, Avenue Domenil is the street that we're on to get all of this brick action over here. See, all the names of those cities that you can go to from here, Lausanne, Zurich, Turin, Milan, Avignon, all, it just makes me want to travel. So Gare de Lyon is one of the major train stations in and out of Paris. The easternmost station, which is ironic because there is a station named Gare de l'Est, the station of the east, but it's really more right next to the station of the north. I'm gonna wait to get past all this traffic to finish that thought. The joys of having to be concerned with sound in a city that never gives you more than a few seconds of silence at a time. It's interesting though, I've never taken this tunnel, I'm really curious about it. Anyways, the main point of interest up here for me, the station itself is beautiful, but the, the clock tower I think is gorgeous. And then it's Tremble is like a really nice, they've redone it recently, I guess the menu has changed and everything. It's a really famous restaurant that, um, yeah, it's really nice and it's just kind of a fancy place on the inside. It's a good date spot if you're looking for a date spot and you're in this area and McDonald's is not your cup of tea. And you have a budget, you know, that, that helps too. If you want a little bit more, I'll link it to the video, but it's a really beautiful restaurant. Probably the nicest restaurant in any train station in Paris. It is like definitely higher mid price. So it's gonna be, you're gonna expect to spend like probably just for a regular dish is, you know, over 20 euros, probably 25 euros. So I'd expect it like 50 euros a person kind of a thing if you're gonna have some wine. Anyways, this has been Saint Marguerite. Thanks to the Trembleu for letting me come in and film a little bit. I don't know why I'm thinking them now, but might as well. And of course, thanks to Lucy for joining me. Thanks for having me. Of course, it's really good to wander around and find. This has been the 12th of and uh, yeah, no, it's not Saint Marguerite. I said Saint Marguerite. It's been 15. 20. So this has been the, the, the quarter of the uh, old way of saying 300, which is still pretty miserable. Uh, and yeah, hope you enjoyed it, wandering around a little bit. I'll probably go and wander over to get a couple shots of the other boundaries, like the basin of the arsenal and the Seine a little bit, but it was more interesting to me to walk around in the middle today. And uh, yeah, I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning for somewhere in Paris, I'm sure. Hope you're having a great day and yeah, see you tomorrow. I almost completely forgot. Well, actually, I don't think I realized that it was in this uh, district. Have you ever been to Rue Cremieux? Okay, you have to check this out. Oh, 
Oh no, I have. Yes, you, I have. Have you seen that? With my brother and Emily, yeah. It's cool. Great, I always find the best spot for sound. And thanks of course to today's Patreon producer, Stark. I'm really glad you're here. As always, 